happiness through curiosity on TRS clips is time travel scientifically possible and if yes how and is this something you've thought about is time machine something you've thought about yeah yes yeah uh, so the answer for the first question that uh, is it uh, time travel scientifically possible yeah that is a uh, kind of answer that comes from the general theory of relativity that uh, albert einstein has uh, inter- uh, like brought to us so uh, basically um, what it uh, what it tells to us is that the space uh, that we call uh, like that we experience right now like it has got three dimensions like uh, length breadth and height so this floor if you look at it, it has length and breadth and the the height of the wall gives you that so we are accustomed to be in a 3d space so we assume that uh, that the, the everything is normally three dimensional that's what we normally feel uh, but uh, when you look at uh, einstein's theory of relativity what it does is it considers time as a one of the uh, uh, like it's as similar almost similar to your length breadth and height as another dimension and as an, another dimension so uh, many people find it very difficult to comprehend uh, the the dimensionality the entire concept of dimensionality is a very com- very very difficult to comprehend so i normally give a kind of a mental exercise like for example uh if you if you look at a piece of paper uh, uh and whatever you draw inside that piece of paper uh, like uh, you can draw a rectangle you can you can draw a, a house with a, like a, if you are an artist you can draw the house so f- you feel like you have a kind of a depth inside that so assume that your 3d space has somehow got completely absorbed into a uh paper so once you have that that in your mental picture then you can assume that if you put a pencil as perpendicular to the paper then that can be considered as a fourth dimension so of course like when you look at the piece of paper uh, you you will be see one of the dimension get compressed into the paper itself like uh, if you if you draw a rectangle you can see the length and breadth or aligning with the length and breadth of the paper but you are when you are drawing a house uh with uh, with the full color shade shadow everything so it's full uh, house uh, in the uh, like in a photograph of a house for example like so a the 3d third, house ah, the, where we are seeing it from ah, a diagonal angle correct so the uh, the how the third dimension is actually uh, you can say absorbed into the the paper itself mm. that's what you are saying then you can conceptualize a kind of a fourth uh, fourth dimension on the on that paper so mm. that is how you can visualize the or comprehend the fourth dimension have you seen interstellar the movie yeah yes yes so at the end of interstellar the climax that they've shown is a good representation yeah, of yes, the fourth yes. dimension correct that correct. you can actually move forward and backward yes. on the timeline as exactly. well exactly yeah right okay so for example this podcast that's happening now mm-hmm. uh, actually if someone had the capability of time travel mm-hmm. they would be able to see the same 3d space mm-hmm. but from a month ago when i was podcasting with a cricketer probably exactly yeah correct thinking correct correct okay so uh, when you have in fourth dimension your body now you 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 know human shape you are you are shaped like a human being like so when in a fourth dimension it's like a big snake huh? your body will be like look like a snake uh, as a four dimensional snake because at the tail end of it uh, you have your small baby uh, you born as a baby mm. that will be your uh, end end point like even go can further it will be a small uh, like single cellular zygote a single cell uh, that is your tip of your lifeline mm. and if you go uh, to the other end you will see your dead body so between your dead body and uh, your uh, single cellular uh, that's a psychotical form when you are born uh, you have all your bodies that you have assumed in your life that all combined together it, you will have a four dimension lifeline and uh, the way to look at it something like a big snake uh, the that uh, the it's a kind of a, your body is like a four dimensional snake and this entire snake body of the four, four dimensional snake body is in the time axis so you have uh, like a part of it is in the past part of it is in the future so Damn. this is your structure of your um, universe you, you know i just want to uh, mention one thing yeah. this is kind of little difficult even for me to comprehend though i have an understanding of what you're saying there's a lot of viewers who may not even have understood this but the key to be noted here is that there are 
dimensions which are difficult to perceive beyond human understanding correct this is one of those conversations that yeah. it's just a difficult concept to understand correct so uh, once you understand this uh, see going to going and seeing your past life is nothing but like because you have millions of bodies in your four dimensional timeline so you are just uh, like uh using some kind of a uh, scientific methodology you are taking one of the body and going back mm. to your past life body or your future life body and like that regular human life you can only perceive the three dimensions yes, yes. but this is some higher understanding maybe correct correct okay go yeah. on so this is the overall uh, uh, einstein's uh, basic principles of uh, like uh, um which which actually give out scientifically or mathematically give out the possibility of a time travel so the general theory of relativity doesn't prohibit the time travel because uh, you can move backward and forward in time that is go to past and future just like you go left and right uh, forward and backward or upward and downwards you can go past and future so all set that is everything fine but there are certain uh, kind of uh, laws uh, which actually can uh, create some kind of interference with the your full freedom in your fourth dimension some of them are like entropy uh, that is the principle of entropy which is like uh, uh, which insists that uh, yeah any kind of act activity uh, cannot be re reversed backwards like for example uh, if you are if you have a glass if you throw it on the floor it breaks into multiple pieces so breakage is natural but there is uh, theoretically or maybe probabilistically it is not very easy for all the different pieces of your broken uh, like uh, glass to assemble back so this is one one problem that uh, affects the uh, this uh, principle of free full freedom of uh, time travel so uh, whenever you devise a kind of a machine so they, they have to consider this kind of thing another thing is cause effect relationships so Uh, all the effects are result of a certain set of causes <laughs> maybe i is a very math but is it something like uh, you you are actually the son of your parents so your two two of your parents your father and mother is the cause that created you so there is a kind of a chain of cost uh, cause and effect relationship that is in play so some of see for example there are certain actions it's called a paradox time travel paradox grandfather paradox so many names it is that uh, if if you go back in time and kill your grandfather, kill your grandfather then do you even exist correct so there are certain such questions mm. so these are the two cause effect relationships and the entropy are the two main things that uh, actually curtail your freedom to travel backward in past future there is no problem because it allows the cause effect no no impact on the cause effect no impact on the entropy so you can travel into the future but traveling into the past there are these two problems so scientists have so this is all beyond uh, whatever einstein had thought so this are all happened in the last century after einstein has gone uh, people have thought about like, of course after that quantum theory has expanded little more with the possibility of time travel in using quantum mechanics everything has been thought about and uh, then that that is the layer you you get the black hole concept like black hole black hole actually wraps your space time so that it creates a hole which are four dimensional holes into which you can travel and uh, naturally you can get into a uh, place which is uh, like space area in space time which is past or future yeah so, i i just want to uh, explain it in a small way take a paper you draw correct. one dot at one corner of the paper on the opposite end yeah. as in on the opposite corner you draw another dot yeah. when you join those two dots by folding the paper that's how a black hole works in space correct. time correct exactly okay so uh, you have a lot of thought experiments which can uh, like explain this concept very nicely like whatever you mentioned okay so these are all these are all uh, tech, uh, like theoretical advancement happened both in the theory of relativity and in quantum theory uh, so uh, then uh, this uh, stephen hawking's he has introduced a lot of concepts into that uh, which allows uh, or disallows you the going into the past in in your time axis so the whatever recently or maybe not very recent but at least two two decades old theory i mean it's starting from 2000, 1990s we have got a theory of multiverse you maybe heard of it maybe we might have done some podcast on it so uh, when you have a multiverse it's something like this grandfather paradox itself uh, will not be a 
problem and cause effect relationship uh, or entropy all these uh, kind of problems will not be uh, creating any hindrance in the time travel because according to the multiverse theory if you go back in time you actually yeah. sprouting out a new universe yes, itself yes. so whatever happens in that timeline is exclusive to that timeline whatever happens in your original timeline yes. is just how it is correct so uh, when you are moving into a past you are not moving into your own uh, universal past mm. but it is a parallel universal past you are moving because of which you are not it's completely a new territory okay whatever you do there it will create a kind of a new uh, chain of events and that universe will be see the only problem that happens is that there were infinite number of universes infinite number of copies of yourself infinite number of grandfathers copies of your uh, grandfather copies but you happen to go into a past and end, ended in uh, reached a universe uh, where you kill the grandfather so that you are not born in that universe mm. but you are still there mm. so that grandfather paradox is uh, eliminated okay so uh, time travel you have to segregate separate into two categories traveling into future traveling into past if you want to travel into past then you have to accept that there are multiple universes okay. that is where we are standing right now the world of science the world of science is standing right okay. now i know that science and scientific discovery eventually lead to engineering correct yeah has there been any engineering that's happened in the direction of time travel or has anyone attempted anything um officially like Uh, nobody isro is not attempting that i can very clearly say okay uh, but there are certain org- uh, uh, interesting organizations which uh, who are trying that but i think uh, currently we are a little bit premature in uh, trying t- uh, for the time travel but there is another interesting concept i mean it has been around for only for 5 years so it's not very much in, uh, came into the literature uh, is that instead of sending a person into the future uh, you can transmit information into the future into the future see the, the future uh, the time travel to future is not having any theoretical problem it's only a technological problem but really? technology is uh, technology is not uh, available right now to send a actual human being into future what would be required uh, so uh, here what it what is uh, they are suggesting is that of course this requires a kind of cooperation with the future people but assuming that there is a kind of uh, people who are ready to uh, receive your information what you can do is uh, your entire uh, human body is nothing but a lot of information like for example all your uh, tissue cell then dna so if you if you transmit the, all the information in your dna and uh, if there is a technology to take that information and recreate your dna then of course your char- body characteristics can be uh, transmitted similarly mental so you have information encoding in your dna and also in your brain so information inside your brain is nothing but your memories your thoughts etc so it's a different kind of information different than genetic information so your brain information and genetic information are the two main information that defines you who you are i mean so when all this information goes uh, and uh, it get assembled back exactly like this you become uh, like you just get transposed to another place mm. you're basically taking tiny bits of yourself and ah. throwing it into the future yes my question is what is the device to be able to throw it yeah so this is uh, currently we don't have it i mean basically the all the devices which can transmit information uh, if you make it advanced you can do that but currently we don't have it but one one, mm. one second sir. i'm so sorry yeah. i'm interrupting this is just to understand it better i'm a telecom engineer Yeah. and i have learned how you transmit information from one device to another device Correct. and it's not as simple as people think mm. people visualize it as a laser comes out of one device mm. probably carries information so when mm. you're actually making a phone call to someone also mm. telecom engineering is at play mm. where your voice is broken up into tiny bits yeah and then sent from one device your mobile phone to the mobile tower mobile tower to mobile center then another mobile tower then the other person's phone yeah. very rudimentary explanation yeah so you're saying that if a device is powerful enough it can actually not just transmit to another location in space but also in time but also in time in future but when you say powerful enough do you mean a very high voltage or something oh no it's not just powerful but it's also that technological capability see uh, currently if you if you look at realistically in our current time period as of 2023 we have the capability to map the uh, like uh, human thoughts uh, brain waves you can actually uh, and there are certain uh, devices where you think you can move the mouse of a cursor mouse cursor on a uh, on a laptop so that kind of capabilities are there so that means now you have a rudimentary level of capability to map some of your human thoughts and transmit it into a 
external device and then you can do it for actuation etc so there is a brain based uh, uh, control systems everything available just like uh, in a virtual reality device if you have seen you can use your eyes and you can uh, control your uh, the 3d objects etc or you can create a menu if there is a menu you can control the menu and you can do a lot of things just by looking and the advanced version of it is that you just think about it you don't have to look about it. look at it you want to think about it. like you want to move the mouse on a particular like if you want a coffee so you have a uh, coffee machine and it's an augmented reality based in menu is in front of you uh, you want coffee means you can move the mouse onto the coffee uh, button click on it and you get the coffee this already exists it's already there this kind this much kind of things are already there and they've done this by mapping brain waves brain waves basically so brain wave you, mapping when you think about or oh, move in the right direction or move towards the top direction mm. a particular part of your brain lights up yeah. the sensor picks up which part of your brain has lit up yes. and then sends the signal to the device saying oh this person is thinking about moving the cursor to the top yeah. right yeah and okay. this itself is very technologically a leap because uh, this machine is able to decipher the coordinate you know what is the kind of motion like left to left left to right top or to which amount you have to move all these things are able to get coordinated into the machine okay so that's a very good level of uh, capability so the advanced version of it is that assume that you have got a cooperation of a future uh, like uh, entity like uh, maybe 21st or 23rd century is thrown into the 23rd century yeah <laughs> okay so you can act, uh, so then your robotics everything will be advanced to such a level that uh you will be able to have a robotic brain which can absorb everything a human brain is capable of so that means it can download the entire human brain's memory as well as human brain's thought onto its own brain so you can have electronic uh, or uh, artificially created robots which resemble like resemble you like of course uh, facial resemblance is already available you can actually create a robot of exactly looking like you facially it is possible so uh, you have a your own uh, like uh, what do you call it it is something like uh, you can use the word avatar for example but it's not in the sense of uh, avatar in a metaverse but it's like a physical robot which is actually ready to embody you yeah. but how will you send it in the future again like uh -huh. as in when you're saying a powerful device to be able to send information mm -hmm. into the future yeah. is it through a wormhole yeah here this is this is we use a quantum tunneling kind of concept so it's a it's a kind of a wormhole but it's a quantum tunnel okay like uh, a micro black hole yeah it's like a uh, you can create a local black hole uh, in in, a de in your device mm. i mean uh, the quadrum collider etc that they are actually like uh, leading towards that so you can actually uh, like uh, create a wormhole a local wormhole in your in your in your own space time okay. and you can direct it to any any point in your future so once the wormhole is ready sending information is easier than sending the entire human body yeah to that future because i believe that uh, according to the theory of how wormholes work yeah if you throw mass through a wormhole the wormhole collapses yes uh, so therefore just throwing a laser in mm -hmm. without any mass but just with information yes. actually might be able to be a transfer of correct, uh, correct. Yeah. data into the future yeah so you are only transmitting data and data is electromagnetic waves mm. so it's like uh, it can go in the speed of light through the wormhole and reach the other other part so and there is a receiver so this particular what i have designated as avatar it can also be called as a receiver mm. so it's a re receiver of your consciousness so then in the first time i'm using the word consciousness because nobody has defined it yeah so currently we can only define it as like for example my consciousness is nothing but my memory which is a lot of data and my thoughts so once these two things are transmitted then i am transmitting my consciousness understood like that so if you enjoy this video subscribe to trs clips for more